Okay. Go for it. Now you're going to tell me about what was, what life was like on the plantation, the large plantations. Well, uh, uh, the plantation uh, that was uh, was uh, was more than I say more than one person. It was a bunch of people that had houses. Uh, uh, maybe on a farm would be they'd be uh, four or five thousand acres. And some on um, some of them big farms, and they'd help. Um, they have houses, and you could, uh, and they put and build them out of green lumber. When they when they dry out, you could stick your hand through the, and, they, and there are people that move in there. They take old quilts and grass sacks and whatever they could to break that stop the wind from coming inside. Most of them had um, heaters uh, where you boil wood in them to keep warm. So the... Um... The landowners, people were living in, 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 in these pretty bad conditions. Oh, well, yeah. The landowners didn't care? No, the landlord didn't care. They, they, people would have to stop them. They take clothes, clothes. They run just by walk and change to put them between the planks and keep the uh, air from coming in or the wind from coming in. <laughs> Why didn't the landowners care? Well, they they figured they had the people by the neck, they could lead them in a way. They they, they, uh, they had to depend on the ship. In a way, when you're depending on somebody else, he can, and that's your only dependence. He can treat you most any kind of way, and you you have to take it. You may not love it, but you have to take it. So, what do you mean by the landowner figured he had him by the neck? Well, they some of them um, farms, they would uh, they were they're the same as being in jail. They couldn't leave this farm, yeah, especially if they say they own something. You got to stay and work it, work it out. And most of them didn't know what they owed because they never got no bill for what for, for what they was getting. They have a commissary store. What they call it, the commissary, but it's still where they, they go get. The flour and the meal and whatever, they still cared for so many things that they, they still they just still didn't carry. They carried the meat and the flour and the meal, maybe baking powder, but you know, for, and a little sugar. Base. Some things they have allowance on where you where you couldn't get, but just so much. So you go to the store and you get your stuff, and then what happened? I mean, how did they, oh, they make it? They make a bill, and when you gather your crop, uh, they take it out of whatever your crop would bring, and, and uh, you take most of them people what was on those big plantations. They didn't, they didn't get no, uh, no bill or nothing. They just go get, and the man put down whatever he want to put down for it. So when I went down there, I uh, had to go to the store. I, uh, I said, I want a, st uh, a bill. A bill? Uh, yeah, I said, I want a statement of what I get. If, uh, if you don't want to give me a statement, I don't want the grocery. <laughs> so, yeah, of course, I didn't. I don't think I owed them over $50. And that was a great big heap, <laughs> you know, a big pile of money for at that time. but. We we uh we made the money we uh, out of our crop we we had uh yeah it was when, when we gathered the crop yeah. but to my others so uh, what had been there and been getting whatever never get no statement just go get and going home they, they they didn't have nothing now you said that after you made your crop 
and then you would you would you would settle up. Oh yeah. Was, I would tell me about tell me about settling up. Please. Well, that would depend on you know we we it's it was two ways to to uh, to uh, make a deal. If you didn't have any stock, the man the plantation owners would punish you to mute and the holes and the sacks and everything to the sponge to the mules and the, and the holes and things to, to make the crop and the cotton sacks where you're picking the crop. You know where the cotton sack is, don't you? I thought you had one on your shoulder. <laughs> Question? I'm no. waiting. No, you were telling me about the two ways to settle up. One way is that the, the the owner would would provide you with some things, and the other way was um, you didn't tell me. Well, I, I I said when I moved down, see, I was I wasn't raised in in this rich fertile land. wasn't raised uh, I was raised on the hill, post oak land. Anyway, and uh, I was. Wasn't used to having a getting credit and stuff like that. My dad, he, we managed to not make no no uh, account, not have account or no. We tried to live on what we had, you know. Now, but without going on in debt, we didn't go in debt. But when after my dad got killed, we moved to this this uh, rich land down there, so. We uh, got a little stuff from them, but that, uh, and when and when the uh, when the crop was harvested and over with, the boss come in and told us, say Hancock says, uh, "Y'all say y'all are good workers." Say, but we can't make no money off it. You don't <laughs> you don't come to the store to get stuff. So, yeah, yeah. so say, but. Say, you're good workers and everything, but we can't we can't use it. So uh, we went and went and rented another place and stayed on it for a year or so. And then the uh, union come along, and uh, I had to go. Let's stop for a second. Okay. Now you were going to tell me about. Splitting the crop. Hmm? Third and fourth is what you call Oh, that was, uh, when you uh, had your mules and your plow and your hoes and everything to cultivate the crop with, uh, you would get, uh, you were on the third and fourth. And when you didn't have that, you had to use the, the planter. Uh, mule and plows and, and holes and stuff like that. They, uh, see, they, the sharecropper didn't have to pay for them. The as that's what you call on on a sharecropper. You you work and you're supposed to get half whatever your uh, uh, was raised. If you made two bales of cotton, you get one and the Land on to get one. If you made two loads of corn, you you get one. Landlord get one. That's what's called sharecropping. But when you're working on the third and fourth, for you there, farmer get he take three bales of cotton, get a landlord one bale of cotton for the use of the land, and the corn give him one load of corn out of three. Load, he get one load. So did people work more on third and fourth, or did they work more as sharecroppers? It was more on sharecroppers. More people that, that, that didn't have no st uh, animals to fly the coat. See, it didn't, we didn't have them uh, machinery like they got today. Now you know, see, today one man get out there and plow more than a hundred men used to. Probably with a mule in a day, one machine. Now, could, do you know if the sharecroppers and tenant farmers 
saw machines coming? Did they see that things were going to change because of machines? No, I don't think they, um, they were thinking that far in advance. Do you think the planners were thinking that far in advance? Well, the plan planners was uh, thinking because that was uh, the machinery. What one they they didn't have to depend on all the the work that was being done by hand. It, it, it would have to have more people to do it. But when they when when they get down to one man and one of them big machinery doing as much as maybe twenty men in a day. And eight and ten row cultivators, and then they get the uh, cotton picking machine. And it, it, it'll pick a bale of cotton from one end to the other, or something else like that. But it didn't, they didn't have no use for the cotton uh, people to come out there and put them bags on them on this back and uh, and pick cotton. I was back in the third. Now you can begin. Well, I was back in the thirty twenties and thirties. So, uh, when uh, I was out on the farm, was farming, and then they were, uh, we were where I live, where I was born. That was it was postal grounds, and the little old cotton didn't get over knee high. It was tall. If it got knee high, we thought that was some tall cotton. And when we got on the bottom, and we had to reach up to the cotton, we'd pick it and we'd be able to reach up to it and get the bowl of the cotton. Anyway, we, after my father got killed, we went to the bottom and went on and made a, we, uh, made a crop working what we had our own stock. And we were working on what they call the third and the fourth. We give them the Third, uh, a load of corn and a fourth bale of cotton. So, anyway, well, we we stayed on this plantation one year, and a man come and told us, "Well, Hancock said y'all are good workers, but we can't, we can't, uh, you, uh, we can't." Uh, let you live with an animal we we'll say sorry, but we 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 you'll have to find somewhere else to go. So we did, and uh, he said because we don't we can't make no money off. But you see, I I made it just about a clear crop, one bill of cotton paid for all, all the groceries and things we, I had got from them, and that and that uh, land down there make two or three bills of cotton to the acre. But you had told me, yeah. You can begin telling me about candy cane. Oh, from candy cane. Well, that was uh, we we there. Most of the people who worked down there was uh, from candy cane. That's from the time they could see until they can't see. That was on the plantations, especially. They didn't have a, uh, they'd have a hour. From twelve to one o'clock, but that was mostly for the stock to eat the, the mules. That was mostly for them. They wouldn't care whether the people ate or not. So they have an hour, and then they work from that from the can. That was from the push, when you push the light enough to see. We call that from can and. You work until you can't, that was uh, until you can't see. We called it from can to can't work from can to can't. You didn't have no eight hour or ten hour day. You worked out from the time you can't see till you can't see. Now, because of situations like that, is that why you all got together to, farm, to form the STFU? Yeah, it was a condition of the people, was what we, was why we all. Uh, uh, they start began to organize, and the people to, the and the next thing the people was was not getting paid for what they had produced. They just uh, 
the way they were doing it, but the whole thing, you just go get what it you want, and they tell you, oh, you'd like to come out of there. You never, they never give you no bill or nothing, so you couldn't say that it was, uh, he wasn't right. <laughs> so, but uh, and when we uh, the uh, Southern Tenor Farmers Union was organized, and we went to opening the eyes of the people. Uh, some of them planters, it was that that made them mad. They made them uh, when the people they they couldn't live there on the plantation and be in the union. They, so, do you remember uh, the plantation owners evicting people? Do I remember evicting people? Oh yeah, I remember. But uh, I yeah. Uh, I don't just say, uh, can remember the names of all of them who were doing it, but as, but as a whole, in the uh, in the pearl, uh in the rich land on the rich land, that was that was uh, the way they did it. And of course, that wasn't altogether uh, just the white man. There's some colored people that was kind of wealthy. The Scott Bond, the Bonds, uh, maybe, maybe you heard of uh, them. And they, they seemed like they treated the, the people worse than the uh, other people did. So it wasn't just race, it was more the rich versus the poor? Yeah, rich versus the poor. Tell me more about that. Well, it was. The main thing about it is it, the it, uh, poor man had to. It wasn't more because he wanted to. See, he had to get, he had a family, or the poor man had a family, but if you got a family, and especially you, you got some kids that are four or five years old, when they get to saying, Daddy, I'm hungry and I'm crying because they don't have anything to eat, you're going to do something if it's ain't nothing but kill somebody. To get it, to quieten them kids. Mm -hmm. So you knew people that felt like that, that felt oh, like yeah. killing somebody sometimes. Oh yeah, I'm not sure. I, 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 I knew people who uh, try to kill somebody, rob them, or something. You know, uh, when when you get home, you do anything. That's how I'm gonna get to talking, brother. You go anywhere and do anything for. Something to feel it. <laughs> and there were a lot of hungry people, a lot of hungry sharecroppers and tenant farmers. Oh well, if you, they if they were good workers, they could. Uh, I mean, they they go up to the, uh, to the commissaries and stores and they get. It didn't be too many. It wasn't too many to say getting hungry. It was more ragged people than it was hungry people. Who they didn't have what the appetite didn't have what they should have to put in the stomach, but some fat back what they call the fat back meat, and and some of them had gardens where they have turn up greens and stuff like that. Now, tell tell me about the relationship between the planters and the sharecroppers. You know, um, you told me outside that sometimes it was pretty brutal and um, that they treated people in many cases worse than they treated the mules and so forth. As a matter of fact, you told me this little saying about kill a mule and whatnot. So tell me a little bit about that and tell me that saying also. Well, uh, you take all those big plantations where they had done. Um, well, some of those big plantations, when you moved on that, they had guards there where you couldn't leave that plantation. Wait a minute. Wait, let's stop this second. Okay. No, we were talking about the relationship and whatnot and how they treated animals sometimes better than they treated oh, people. Yeah, and, that, and, there, and there was a saying about the mule and the, and the nigger. Oh, yeah, well, that was a old saying. If you say, kill a mule by another, Hi, nigga. Let me see. I kill a mule by another. Kill a nigger high another. No. Tell me that again. Kill a mule by another. Kill a nigger by uh, high another one. Okay, I need for you to tell me that again and tell me why, how that saying came about. Oh, well, uh, 
Now how it came about was it was uh, mostly uh, on them big plantations. Was it, you know I wasn't raised up, up on it uh, nothing, but I've heard it, heard, um, knew about it. You know, it was they treated. I knew they treated the animals better, than, the working animals better than they did the Negroes. Oh, of course, there was a Negro by itself. It was whites too. The white, poor whites suffered too. Can you tell me that saying again? Kill a mule, buy nothing. Kill a nigga, hire nothing. Now, most of these plantation owners were white. Oh, yeah. And you were telling me outside that uh, some of them could be really mean. As a matter of fact, you said that uh, it was some good white people. Some of them was good, but some of them were so rotten that they stink. Yeah. That, Can you tell? I want you to tell me that again, okay? Well, that's uh, I, it was the way it was. Is some of them all, oh, this, it was good whites, just like it is today. The good whites, and then there was some bad ones. That, but uh, you take on. Uh, in most of the places in Arkansas, the whites was, was uh, thought they was better than the Negroes. They was taught that they didn't. Uh, we didn't uh, go to school together like we do out here. The Negroes had them a little three months school they go. White whites have nine months school they go. Can you tell me what you told me outside about it was some good people, but it's some rotten people? Oh, yeah, that's, that's yeah. You don't have to go back to Arkansas to find some good people and some rotten people. You got it. Right. Okay, Mr. Hancock, you going to tell me about how you wrote Roll the Union on and then sing a little bit for me. No, I was I was in Memphis when I wrote Memphis, Tennessee, and I was sitting out in the yard. I read from, read from uh, was in one of the motels, and I was sitting out in the yard, and the song come to me, and I was, wrote it. And been a, been number one to say from then on, and then uh, when I uh, we went on a fundraising trip to. Uh, New York. Uh, I, I stopped by the Library of Congresses, and uh, Pete Seeger's father recorded them. Yeah, well, I had uh, Rule the Union on, and uh, mean things happening in this land, which is the uh, subject of that book. And raggedy, raggedy, we just as raggedy as raggedy can be. Several songs, because you know I'm getting old and forgetful too. <laughs> Can you sing some for me? Yeah, what you want to hear? When we gonna roll the union on? Yeah. We gonna roll. We gonna roll. We gonna roll the union on. We gonna roll. We gonna roll. We gonna roll the union on. If the boss is in the way, we gonna roll it over him. Roll it over him. We gonna roll it over him. If the boss is in the way, we gonna roll it over him. Go roll the union on. We gonna roll. We gonna roll. We gonna roll the union on. We gonna roll. We gonna roll. We're going to roll the union on. If Bush is in the way, we're going to roll it over him. We'll roll it over him. We're going to roll it over him. If Bush is in the way, we're going to roll it over him. Roll the union on. We're going to roll. We're going to roll. We're going to roll the union on. We're going to roll. We're going to roll. We're going to roll the union on. Oh, and I went to Washington, D.C. I didn't think I was going to get away from that when I <laughs> put them voices in there about Bush and the people. <laughs>
people take me out there. So they, me, I, had to, I had to sing some three or four times. Can you give me uh, a little of uh, Mean Things Happening? I've written Mean Things Happening in this land. I've written Mean Things Happening in this land. But the union going on and the union growing strong. There is mean things happening in this land. On the eighteenth day of May, the union called a strike. The planters are in the bosses, so the people out of their shacks. There is mean things happening in this land. There is mean things happening in this land. But the union going on and the union growing strong. There is mean things happening in this land. And the other song, uh, Raggedy, what'd you call it? Raggedy something? Raggedy, raggedy are we. Just as raggedy as raggedy can be. We don't get nothing for our labor. So raggedy, raggedy are we. Hungry, hungry are we, just as hungry as hungry can be. We don't get nothing for our labor, so hungry, hungry are we. Homeless, homeless are we, just as homeless as homeless can be. We don't get nothing for our labor. So homeless, homeless are we. Can you sing the first verse of Raggedy Raggedy again? Raggedy Raggedy are we. Just as raggedy as raggedy can be. We don't get nothing for our labor. So raggedy raggedy are we. Why did you write all of those? And well, it's all right in the way of the conditions that the people were living on. That's what uh, that's what caused me to write uh, mean things happening uh, in the land, raggedy, raggedy, we, homeless, homeless, we. But of course, uh, when the when we put on the strike down there, they they just take the people and throw uh, do their uh, little. Uh, bed and stuff they had to move them out on the highways. Mr. Stop. Stop. Sorry, Sorry. 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 Sorry.
That's when I wrote the song. I was, I had, I had to escape. They say they had the rope and the limb and all they want was me. So I went over to Memphis and I stayed over there. A month or two in, and then, then oh, they, uh, they uh, sent me up in. Uh, they just had me to go up in, in Missouri. Was uh, a farm up there. Uh, his name was Sad Snow. I went up and uh, he welcomed it. He because he was a socialist. He was he didn't believe in all this racism that most of the white did at that time. See, uh, he, at that time, some of the uh, the most of the poor white folks I <laughs> say anyway. <laughs> they, they thought. Uh, Negro didn't have uh, no sense, no nothing, and they, they, they treat them that way. It wasn't nothing was to, uh, for them to even kill a Negro. They might kill him to see how he, how he jump, shoot him to see how he jump, or shoot him to see how he fall and all that kind of stuff. You know? So anyway, when we got to the Union, we got what we are. Uh, Got the union going, the white and the blacks, and was all all together. And we we were coming from, uh, and we were going to uh, Little Rock for uh, on uh, was having our uh, annual program over there, and they chartered a a, a car, you know, a coach, and. Uh, we was on the way over there. We're all together, white and black. Too. Now, what was it? What was it about the union that made black and white be able to come together? Well, the conditions was what made us uh, to what it would uh, helped us to organize the union. The conditions the people were living on. The the poor whites suffered just as much as the poor blacks. Maybe more. Now, were there, as a union organizer, what did you do? Well, I, uh, what first thing uh, I, I think I was just about the first one to go around, start going around from plantation to plantation, trying to organize. We have to we. Had uh, discovered, uh, got together and discussed it about what should be done. Well, I was eager to go, of course. So I, I uh, felt sorry for the people, and of course, I, I, I didn't suffer quite like some of them did from it, you know. Cause uh, I had my own uh, own stock and everything to work this land, and, and uh, as I say, the uh, only uh, thing was kind of bothering us was they find out that we belong to the union and everything. They didn't they didn't want us to be on the place. To okay, we need to stop right there. That's good though. More about that. Well, uh, it was um, as I said. Mitchell was a white man. He was he, he was a he had a, a dry cleaner. He was a dry cleaner up at Tull, I think Tull, Arkansas. And uh, him and uh, Claude William and all of me uh, got together. Much was talking about the union and everything, and so. That's uh, so, where uh, I uh, got acquainted with Claude William and uh, and, uh, and and Mitchell through the uh, we were set up a union down in Arkansas and after we got it set up and everything the planters got old to it so I had to get going. They said they had the rope and the limb and all they wanted is me. I was on out on the river when a, a friend of mine, oh, he was a white friend, and he told Mama, he was at went up to the store and he told Mama, 
about it. They say you'd better uh, tell John to get away from you, but they they're gonna kill him. Mama come down on the river and hollers for me to come. I thought it was just one of the kids that uh, got hurt or something. I rushed on back over shore. So John, you better get away from here. They said they got the rope in the limb and all they want is you. I said, oh, Mama, I had a hot pot I said, oh, Mama, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to get out here inside, inside this hill, and I'm going to put something on their mind. Said, no, no, John. Said, if you just hurt one of them or just shoot at one of them, they'd want to kill us all. So I take the other wood, and I left. And I went on, caught the bus, and went on into Memphis. Stayed around over there so long. Um, so long. Asked me would I want to go up in the northern part of uh, California up in uh, a, uh, this uh, socialist guy, uh, Mitchell, I mean, uh, Snow. Uh -huh. He was, oh, he, he, he had a farm and everything, but he was socialist and everything. He believed, he, I went up there and he made welcome me to everything at a house and everything. I, that's, that's, um, that's good, that's very good. Let me ask you, um, you said that you were afraid for your life and your family was afraid for your life. Mm -hmm. Violence was pretty common, but you were willing to fight back? I mean, you had guns, you were willing to fight back? No, I was ready to try to get out of the way if I had to fight back. Uh, we, uh, see, I for them, my, 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 I take my mother at her word. When she heard about it, she told me, said, John, say, you better get away from here. They said, they got the rope and the limb and all they want you. And the first thing I thought of, get my high power rifle and getting out of them hills and, and greet them with some of them <laughs> when they come for me. Mama said, no, John, say, if you just hurt one, you don't have to kill one, just hurt one, they kill us all. Well, they would have. The Negroes used to be, they didn't have no value to them. You see, they, um, they had old sign, a saying now, kill a nigger, hire another, kill a horse, a mule, buy another one. That was the old saying that they had. Uh, so at that time, uh, we, we weren't looked up on as, as people, you might as well say. Now, w one of the reasons they were looking for you was because of the speech that you had given. You well, said under the moon, it was it was a full moon, and it was just like it was day outside. But you gave this speech. So, and the bosses had something to say about this speech. Can you tell me about that? Well, uh, it was uh, the moon shining at night, all right, when, when I got the people all together and was talking with them and telling them about this union and tell them that what it means to us to be united because uh, so many of them wasn't getting justice out of what they produced, you know, which uh, you all told them about if we go to get together, then we could demand something. We couldn't demand nothing uh, unless we were together. So. Anyway, uh, that went on. We could start. I started setting up little locals here and there. I had, as you go from one plantation to another, and I had several little locals on us kind of start and and to the uh, and planters. They got in the window. What was going on? And then I had to, I had to get ready, get out of there. <laughs> And can you remember anything that any of the planters or the bosses actually said to you? Well, not exactly, um, because uh, I, I never did, uh, say face any of the bosses that, uh, or the planters because uh, they talk, they'd tell somebody else what was talk like they were talking to this friend of mine would come back and told me about some Say they gonna hang me, had the rope and the limb. Well, they didn't, they didn't just imagine if they thought he knew me, 
they they wouldn't have said it, you know, so he could have heard it. But the, he he heard it, and, and then he come on and told Mama, and Mama told me to, to I better get ready, get out of there, because they was they was going they were going to hang me. Now the meetings, the union meetings, you would have to sneak and have the union meetings because the bosses or whomever would come and try to break them up. Is that well accurate? No, I, I, we have a, we didn't have a meeting. I don't think he interrupted so uh, by the gang, but it would after we after I heard about it. I guess it maybe some six months or something uh, that passed. I'd be I had set up set up several locals, go from place to place, and I had a horse I'd ride around and uh, see the people. You know, we I had quite a large organization. We had uh, got in touch with the LTL Mitchell. He was in Memphis, and everything. We had several locals going. Now, what about the sheriffs? What would they do? I mean, they knew that you that people were being beaten and threatened and whatnot. What what would the, what would the sheriffs do? Beat you, beat the Negroes some more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell me more about they that. But we weren't protected. You know, and what, uh, whatever those uh, farmers, whatever those rich people tell them sheriffs to do, that's what they did. It, was, it wasn't, they wasn't uh, doing it on their own altogether. But whatever they told them to do, it was, they had a, a saying there. It was uh, kill a nigga, kill a mule by another, and kill a nigga high another. And so that's the way, just about the way it was. But like the sheriff was elected. Can you stop a second? Yeah. Now. The sheriffs and everything that was uh, was white. And uh, just about, I don't know. Was it was a Negro sheriff between Little Rock and Memphis? Uh, it, was, it was all white, and uh, they uh, had the Ku Klux Klans and stuff like that. The the the, the those uh, officers and policemen and uh, things they all belonged to the this Ku Klux Klan, which was a, a white organization, and. Uh, when they uh, uh, heard about the union, and the union was accepting, was all together, white and black. Well, see, we didn't have no white union and a black union, but we, 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 we had all, we would all meet together, and that, and that uh, kind of upset what the clans and things were doing. <laughs> they, they wanted to get rid of us. So what did the STFU want? What did you guys want? What did we want? Yes. Oh, they, they wasn't say asking us what they, what, what, they, what we want. Hang on just a second. Is that the plane okay? Okay. Yeah. It was uh, what what we were, what we want wasn't in wasn't in the, in the program. Is what was they gonna let us do or give us? Of course, it wasn't giving nothing. We we, we worked for everything we got, but they was, they was one that made all the laws, and we had to obey the law, whatever it was. We wasn't protected, um, especially as a Negro. They wasn't protected by law. You could they could do anything to the Negro, and it was. I remember. It was a Negro come from Louisiana, and he's cross, crossing the bridge at, at Clowna. He was going through the country looking for work, and they caught him just as he crossed the bridge. He would walk across on the, on, off the, on the bridge, and they caught him, and they hung him. My, my father went 
with your clown and see it. Okay, that's the... Come, yeah. come across the bridge. Yeah, come across uh, the bridge. Yeah, that, that was... Uh, okay. Now, can you start and tell me that story again? Oh, yeah, it was a uh, colored guy from Louisiana was coming across the bridge, uh, uh, the railroad bridge. And uh, when he cr crossed it, the white police and thing picked him up. And uh, they had this, this girl who lived about 12 or 15 miles from Clown. It's about the distance between Brankland and Clown. And they sent and got this girl, and this girl, See, he's the man. She, uh, she told, told her father one, uh, some uh, man tried to break into her room. Because uh, what it was, they said, this man was going with the girl, and he went in, the, he lived around, uh, right around in the community. But going out, the window fell, and her daddy jumped up uh, and heard it, and he'd run in there to see what was happening. And she said, nigger, 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 uh, uh, jumped out the window. And they they, uh, they killed the Negro, but this Negro, what they killed now, he they called him as he was crossing the Cash River in Clarendon, Arkansas. And uh, they picked him up and uh, carried him put him in jail and sent for this old girl to come down there. And she said, that's the nigger. And the man told him, just before my daddy went out to, to the lynching of him, my daddy said he told him that was his last words when, when the, where they picked him up was full north as he'd ever been, but they hung him just the same. Yeah, yeah, the Negroes have went through. Uh, they have suffered a lot since they since they've been in in America. You know, they was uh, we were uh, uh, brought here by the white. The Indians owned owned uh, this part of, uh, and uh, the, after the white man discovered, then they went back and went to Africa and brought the Negroes over. Yeah. Now, let me ask you something else. When you think about um, uh, lynchings and the kind of violence that was inflicted upon STFU members uh, just because you wanted what was right, and you think back about that, how does it make you feel? Well, I try not to think about it. That's, that's the first thing. You, anything that's going to make you feel bad, uh, anything, even down to eating. If you eat something, other than it, it make you feel bad. You ain't, ain't, ain't don't want to continue. You, you might have to, but you don't, you just, just take a little part of it. So that's the way, that's, I'm just making a, 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 a what you call it, an indirect way to make it the way you can understand it. Yeah, well, some little things will hurt you just as well as big. It don't have to be a big thing all the time. But I guess now that I'm here asking you these questions and you can't help but think about it, you know, how does it make you feel? Well, I just feel good that I'm away from all of it <laughs> and don't have to go through with it no more, or hopefully. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, do you feel any anger? Do you feel... Uh, hmm? No, I don't feel an anger because what is to be will be. Well, you you may <laughs> it may you may not understand it, but that's where I see life. Whatever, whatever to be, it will be. Now, I take this meeting we have holding here now, or whatever you might, or if it's a meeting, uh, uh, it was to be. And things not to be, it won't be. Now, when you think back about the STFU and the kind of courage that you all had to have to stand up to the planters and whatnot, what makes you the most proud? 
about what you guys did? Well, uh, what make me, I feel good about what the things that I have did and others have uh, did to try to make this a better world to live in. See, this is not uh, when we organized this union, we organized the union under on the purpose of trying. That was just, that was our ideas of trying to make this a better world to live in. If we get together, then we can demand. If enough of us get together, we can demand things. But for you there, I here, and he over there, we can't demand things. I think one way, you think another. You can't. We, we but, but we got to get together. We got to unite. When they say union, that means that we unite together, not just. Now, as you sit here now and, 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 and you think back about the planters and whatnot and the way that they treated the croppers and whatnot, how do you feel about them? Well, that's over. Best look forward, not backwards. Hmm? I mean, do you feel sorry for them? Do you pity them? Or you just no, 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 them? no. I, I just try to forget it. What is have been done is done. It's no, it's nothing you can do to them. To uh, it will make things any better than it was then. I mean, that's the past. We, but we got to live by the day. Don't look back, but look forward. You mean you understand what I mean yes, sir. by looking forward, going forward, doing the same, treating others as you wish to be treated. That's that's one thing we should do. Let's stop for a minute. Let's see, I'll tell you all, but. Ain't but one thing that was gonna make this a better world to live in is we got to, to unite. Mm -hmm. We got to forget the color of the skin. You you understand what I'm talking about? Yes, so we got to forget our nationality. I'm black man, you white man. Uh, are you better than I am? Of course, you white. I better than you. Am. We got to get together. That's the only thing that's going to ever make this world a, a happy place. Uh, that last was a wild track. Um, I guess take uh, John Hancock's Take Your Love Out. He never went to school but one day. But he learned how to read. Mm -hmm. And and you couldn't beat him triggering to save your life. But he, I mean, he he, he could have he cotton, you know, was thirteen, fourteen cents a a pound. Shoot, he tell you what. <laughs> whilst we've been talking, he could tell you what it what it bring. You remember the strike? Huh? You, you remember the strike? I was in the strike. Okay, why don't you tell me about the strike? <laughs> Well, wait a minute, now you got it. Okay. You can begin telling me about the strike now. Oh, well, when we had the strike, and uh, uh, we went into uh, people on these farms and things and, uh, and tried to uh, tell them that they wasn't getting their share of what they had produced. That was the main thing. We was. Some of them had, uh, was so, uh, oh, most of them was older than I, I was uh, quite young, yeah. and, uh, and they had children as old as I was. But I was, we would tell them about, they should, what they was doing was, uh, was I mean, what they was getting out of life, what, and they was working hard and, and getting nothing. How much were they getting? 
Well, just whatever the uh, the people that they're working for was mostly is what they let them have. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't a whole lot. They just have uh, something that was the. Uh, they didn't have no whole lot of clothes or because I've seen uh, seen the men were so ragged they had to walk sideways when they passed people. They would they'd be so naked. But it, it was it was awful. And uh, and there's a whole lot of people didn't didn't uh, eat too well either. How do how did you um the people like men maintain their dignity and still be proud men under those conditions? Well, you know, some of us, some of us, even to this day, somebody do our thinking. We don't think ourselves. So <laughs> that's that's the way I guess the world be. It's some gonna do good, some bad. It's, that's the way. Uh, it's, I guess it's the way it's to to be. Now let me ask you one last question. Okay. What did you all think of, of, of Roosevelt and the federal government? Did you think he was for you? Well, no, that's too yeah, about too deep a question. I don't. I, and Roosevelt been gone. I don't even can't even think what he was standing for. Well, he was against. Uh, did you think he was in support of the sharecroppers and the union? As far as I know, I, I'm. I don't think he he was supporting them. I don't think now. Nah, he, 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 I can't remember nothing that he was did during his administration. I, I don't know. What. See, that's been a long time ago. What about Eleanor? Did you feel that she was? Well, I think I heard her. Her speaking against. Some of the things, the way they were treating the Negro. I think I heard that now on uh, television, radio, or something. It's been that's been a long time, you know, and I can't remember back to to on a whole lot of subjects. <laughs> that's it. No.